I'm always looking for ways to increase my programming speed. And one of the things I've noticed is I spend a lot of time Googling simple things. So to help solve that problem, I created the Python speed sheet. It gives me quick answers to basic Python questions without having to reach for the entire web. What I discovered is this simple tool saved me a ton of time. Let me show you how it works. Say you quickly want to check the syntax for a list comprehension. Go to the Python speed sheet, link in the description below, and enter list comprehension in the search bar. Voila, your list comprehension. Notice the code you're looking for is the first thing you see. It's right up front, right after the heading, and right where you need it. In this case, here's also the return type, just to make absolutely clear this is returning a list. Then a quick explanation, followed by an example demonstrating the code in action. Let's do one more. What if you need to convert a date time to a string? What's the code for that? Back to the search bar. Escape clears your last search. Type format date time. And there's your answer. Again, the code you're looking for is the very first thing right on top. Here you see three different forms. The first one is fine. And look at this, date and time format codes right where you need them. So is this really better than the alternative searching the web? My experience says yes. Now this is specifically for core Python, and this is my personal experience. But when I use this to help me write code, the Python speed sheet knocks my development time by up to half. In comparison, when I use Google to find answers, I have to work to get what I'm looking for. I invariably have to open multiple pages and evaluate whether any of these pages have the answer I'm looking for. And too many pages have too much fluff between me and what I actually need, especially for those times when I need a quick answer. What I'm not doing while searching the web is the one thing I want to be doing, coding. The Python speed sheet, on the other hand, gives me the answer I want and gets out of my way. So again, this is a big time saver for me, and it keeps me focused on the problem, not the code. Your mileage may vary. Let's take this a step further and write a script that actually does something. Let's write a simple script that updates the contents of some file. This is something that could be really handy. I'm going to write it right now with the help of the Python speed sheet. First, what do we need here? We want to read in all the text files in the current directory, replace all the colorful language with boring TV-friendly equivalents, God help us. We then need to write the updates back to the files while making backups of the original. I already created outline comments for the basic steps. Let's create a placeholder function for the update piece for now. We'll get back to it later. Next, let's read the directory for text files. I'm going to go to the Python speed sheet for this. Look up read directory. I want to filter the results, so let's add that in. And here it is. Copy the package import statements and place them on top. And the Python speed sheet will always have the import statements, leaving you with one less thing to worry about. Copy over the code itself. Set the directory path to the current directory. Here I'm going to use a constant for the filter. To find that on top, loop through the file names. Let's add a print statement here so we can see what files are actually getting processed. Tab these in to match the indentation. Let's run this and see what we got. OK, so this is not what we want. Our terminal is trying to run this as a bash script. Let's see if the Python speed sheet has anything for this. And look at that. We can use a shebang. This will tell Bash how to run the script as a Python script without explicitly typing Python into the command. Brilliant. Now, you Windows developers won't need this. Add this to the very top of our script and run again. Much better. We can see that it is reading exactly what we expected. Next, let's make a backup copy of this file. Back to the Python speed sheet, look up copy file. Again, copy paste the import statement. And we'll give our backup file name the extension .backup. Now let's read the file. Search for read text file because we want to read this as text. We have several options here, but the first entry is fine for us. Copy paste. Now let's add in the piece that calls the update function. I write the contents back out to the file, similar to reading the text file above. Copy paste. And finally, let's get back to that update statement. But what we want to do is replace one string with another. Here, Speedsheet gives us some options. 
We could use the standard string replace function, that would be easy, but I want to obscure what I'm replacing just in case. Let's use a regular expression, that'd be fun. The Python speed sheet makes this really easy. Copy paste the import statement. Type in our regex sub. So what do we have here? We want to replace two words you can't use on TV. The first one starting with M, the second one starting with F, and ending in ER, and we want to replace it with something you can use on TV. Speed sheet to the rescue. It also has regular expression codes. Start with M. We need to follow this with five letters. What would select a letter? Dot. There you go. And what will give us five of these? There it is. We'll do the same for the F part and add ER at the end. And look what those creative TV people came up with. We got one more. I'll add that in here. All we have left to do is run it. Looking good. Quick check on the file to see the change. And we're done. So how did this work out? This basically wrote itself. Answers were right at my fingertips. It was virtually copy and paste. Now in the real world, it wouldn't be this simple, but this absolutely still works. And every time you don't have to reach for Google is more time spent in the zone. And for me at least, a far smaller chance of getting lost down some rabbit hole. So hopefully I made a compelling case to give this a shot in your next project. And hopefully you'll find it beneficial. Either way, let me know what you thought in the comments below. I'm Timo and thanks for watching.